This week's episode is sponsored by Kluke. Kluke is an experienced booking platform with thousands of destinations around the world. If you love to travel, you'll want to know about Kluke. Check out the link in the description of this video and get started on your next adventure. When you make the decision to build and live in a tiny house, you're doing something a little bit unconventional. But when you risk doing something that's a little bit outside of the norm, you can also yield unconventional results. And that is exactly what's happened with this incredibly inspiring story. After seven years, we're now back once again visiting Paul and Annette in their stunning off-the-grid tiny house. And I am so excited to share updates of their story with you. Hey Annette, it's hey. so lovely to see you again. <laughs> nice to see you. Hey too. Bryce, good Paul, to see you. <laughs> so good to see you. Yeah. And guys, the place is just looking amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. When we first met you, you had only just built this place, and then we visited again after a year. And now, five years later, <laughs> here we are, which is just so amazing. Although also terrifying that five years has just flown by so fast. I know, right? That's crazy. Where did the time go? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. But the place is looking absolutely amazing. Thank you. A lot has changed since mm. we were here last. Yes, that's right. So we added more solar panels, changed our car. I'll let Paul talk more about that <laughs> later. <laughs> um, we made a few changes inside the house, smaller ones. But yeah, it's been, yeah, a lot's been going on. <laughs> yeah, the solar system is looking a lot bigger since we were here last. And of course, that is to power your electric car. Tell me about all that. <laughs> That's right, yeah, we wanted to um, charge the car off-grid solar, and so, yeah, adding more solar really helped us do that. It's, yeah. It's working out really well. So, just going into a little bit of detail about that, because obviously, electric cars, they are very power thirsty. Is this system big enough to be able to get a good charge on an EV? Yeah, that's right. In the winter, we can put in about 20% a day, and in the summer, more like 30% a day. So, yeah, it's free fuel, really. It's great. Fantastic. And yeah. the lights still go on in the house? That's right, yes, <laughs> that's right. What a great idea. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the things that was really exciting about your tiny house build from the start was that you have always been people that really sort of push the boundaries in terms of what's possible mm. with off-grid technology and tiny house living combined. How are all of your systems still working after all of this time? Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I think we've been here seven, eight years now and it's just, it's no worries at all. It's really easy. Yeah. Great. And it's becoming more and more normal now, which is quite mm. cool, like the solar battery systems and yeah, so it's really cool. Yeah, you were very much pioneers of all of that. And now it is certainly becoming more commonplace. But what I think is so good is that so frequently we visit people who have either just moved into that lifestyle or they're just sort of getting into it, but you've really been living and walking this path now for mm. so long. Mm. You probably have better insights into this stuff than anybody that I know. <laughs> well, it's been pretty normal for us and we don't even, you know, we don't even think about it anymore. We just live our lives life and don't think about where our power comes from so to speak we know it comes from the sun and the sun is mostly out there it gets a bit tricky when we have overcast days yeah and when it rains consecutively but since we expanded on the solar panels even that is not a huge issue it just means we can't charge the car off our solar but that's okay like there are lots of public charges around and yeah so we still make it work yeah absolutely mm. the biogas is looking a lot happier now than it was last time <laughs> yeah it's been going really well consistently just making gas for us and digesting our toilet waste so it's a it's great solution for off-grids perfect and providing fertilizer for the garden as well yeah, yeah. and you're using the gas for cooking and stuff yeah. yes yeah yep. wow <laughs> It's still such a crazy system to me, but it's just so cool to see it working so well, eh? Yeah, it's just normal for us. It's we don't even think about it. You just use it. Yeah. yeah. So do you need any LPG in the house or it's all just the biogas? No, all just, all the just the biogas. biogas. But we do also have induction. The gas yeah. is more of a supplement to the yeah. electricity. We primarily use electricity, right. the induction. Right. And, and in yeah. summer, we can't keep up with the gas, actually, because obviously it's hot and there's a lot more gas production. So we use it a lot more in summer. In winter, it slows down a little bit and we will use induction a bit more. Yeah, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Mm. And the solar hot water's still cranking? Still cranking, reliable hot water all year round. Awesome. Yeah, it's great, easy. <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. And the gardens are looking fantastic. You've obviously <laughs> been hard at work out here. Thank you. I can, yeah, a lot of the plants just do their own thing now, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and they have a lot of pineapple and banana and pawpaw and you know they just grow and 
we can eat the fruit from it. That's good. Yeah. Without me having to do too much. <laughs> yeah. And I see that you've fenced off part of the section now for another very exciting new addition. <laughs> that's right. It's very special and very new because we got a puppy. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. <laughs> yeah. So she's a uh, one-year-old border collie, um, Smithfield kettle dog, and oh. yeah, she's very nice, very well behaved, full of energy, of course, <laughs> but we love her a lot. <laughs> oh, that's so lovely. So one-year-old, I'm guessing she's a rescue. Yes, she's a rescue. It's a rehoming situation. Right. Um, so her previous owners um, needed to move house and they couldn't take her. So yeah, that's when we stepped in <laughs> and picked her up and adopted her. And I see the poor thing's wearing a cone as well. What's happened there? Yeah, um, she developed a rash on her left eye and started scratching it. So unfortunately she has to wear a cone now and take antibiotics and get some ointment every day. Oh, poor thing. <laughs> but um, yeah, she will get better soon. So it'll be five days of cone and then she'll be all right. Oh, that's good. <laughs> And how is it introducing a puppy to the tiny house? The couch space got smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the couch space got smaller. <laughs> and as part of everything you've done there as well, I see you've got this fantastic bamboo awning out front now and you've done quite a bit of landscaping here too. Yeah, that's right. Um, we got rid of the deck because um, we built it from pellet wood back right. then. And of course, it's just temporary deteriorates under those yeah. extreme conditions. So we were wondering or thinking, what should we do instead? And then we just thought, you know, just gravel and pavers um, is probably a better solution than the ongoing maintenance that's involved with having the deck. Yeah, so Paul then went out and <laughs> chopped up a whole lot of bamboo from just this farm here. Yeah, and it's growing out of control here, so the landowner was quite happy for me to just use it wherever. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. And Great. we found the gravel and the pavers online almost for free. I think we paid a few hundred dollars and yeah. So it was a very cheap job and um, didn't actually take that long, So, and, but it looks all right, I think. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mm. And so everything's still obviously working out very, very well here on this property and with the landowner, because I mean, this is such a beautiful spot you've got here as well. Yeah, no, it's been working out really well. I've been here seven, eight years and yeah, he's happy with us. We're happy being here. It's just win-win. Yeah, I love it. So here now, you've got the solar power for powering the house and now the car. You've got your solar hot water, you've got your biogas. You really have built yourselves into a position where you need extremely little outside input. That's right. Our only outgoing is rent, basically. Wow. For the land, that's it. We have no utility bills. Yeah, and it's been yeah. like that for the whole time Seven we've been years. here. That is just so remarkable that you have been able to make all of that work yeah. in such a phenomenal way. This is truly impressive. Mm -hmm. And it's paid dividends over the years because as cost of living has gone up, and especially with the energy prices and stuff like that, mm. it's, just, it's just made more and more sense as the years have gone on. So yeah. we're very happy we adopted early and did it. And look at your Christmas trees as well. They've got so big. <laughs> yeah, they, they probably shouldn't be here, <laughs> pine trees, but um, yeah, they have, yes. <laughs> I quite like that tradition of getting a live Christmas tree and then planting it after the season. Yeah, well, actually, we've had to cut a couple down because they started shading our solar. Which, of course, is testament to how long you've been on the property now and how well everything is working here. That's true, yes. That's cool. Yeah. Well, it is just so nice to be back here after all this time, and I cannot wait to see what's changed inside after five years. That's right. Let's go inside and have a look. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Oh, the place looks so good. Definitely a lot more lived in now. Yeah, it's been really good for us over the years. It's really comfortable, we're loving it. Yeah, it's been seven years of living in here. So yeah, it's definitely lived in and probably needs a little bit of TLC here and there, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> we well, love it. I think it looks lovely. Yeah. And looking at the space, you haven't really changed very much in here, which I suppose is testament to the fact that everything is just working really well. Yeah, I think we just kept it simple at the beginning and then it's sort of just paid off. And we've done a few things like we've upgraded the shower, replaced the curtain that was there and got a bigger couch. Uh, but apart from that, interior-wise, that's it, really. And you've got your office here, of course, still. How's that all working? Yeah, it's been going well. It's been going really well. Yep. Yeah. Yep, no worries. Because you've been working from home the entire time that you've been here, haven't you? That's right. Yeah, yeah. The whole time we've been here. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's been really great. Well, what a workplace. I know. The commute is basically from there to there. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And that is a very cool-looking computer as well. Did you build that? Yeah, I guess uh, building a tiny house DIY and lock some woodworking skills on me and I managed to do a little side project and it was a lot of fun, so that's good. It looks so cool. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>
And Annette, you're working from home now too. Yes, I'm working from home now as well. It's been two and a half years or so. And initially, it was a little bit of a transitioning process to figure out where I would work in the house because we only have one official desk. When it rains, I usually use the kitchen bench and um, our second office chair. And when the sun is out, I go outside and work from the patio, which is quite nice, actually. Perfect. And what's the new job? The new job is pretty much my old job. Um, I'm working in monitoring and media analysis. So living together full time in a tiny house, now working together in a tiny house. How's that working out for your relationship? Because I know a lot of people that just couldn't do that. It's been all right, actually. Like, I don't know, like we get along really well, I guess. We do go on separate holidays every now and then. Right. Healthy. (laughs) Very healthy. (laughs) And you're still finding everything okay in terms of storage and all of that? Yeah, it's been good. We've got a a loft dedicated to it and basically all sports gear is up there or camping gear and off-season clothes are up there. Yeah, it's good. We also declutter a lot. So we go through our stuff regularly and make sure we only keep the things that we really use. We have a lot of hobby gear these days, so that's obviously a priority. But um, other than that, we, you know, we regularly go through our clothes and any things that have accumulated and then just either give them away or give them to the tip or throw them out. Yeah, Yeah, fantastic. Because I think that is one thing that I think people wonder about living long term in a tiny house is how you deal with accumulation of stuff over time. Mm. And it definitely seems like you're managing that really well. If you think you want to buy something makes you think, actually, where's it going to go? You know, like, do I actually need it? And, you know, so it sort of disciplines yourself, I guess. Mm. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. See, the plants are growing quite a bit in here. (laughs) That's right, yeah. So they're doing quite well. I have downsized quite a bit um, ever since we built the patio because now a lot of them can live outside, which is quite nice. Yeah. So it's not that jungly in here anymore. (laughs) But yeah, I think it's still okay. It's still a good amount of plants in here. (laughs) Yeah, I completely agree. And the kitchen's still working out for you? You're still enjoying cooking in here? Yeah, that's all good. Yeah, we haven't changed anything about the kitchen at all. The kitchen bench is fine. The workspace is fine. We added a couple of uh, more shelves just to have a little bit more space. But other than that, we left everything as it was. And yeah, it's working out really well. And we got the uh, two hobs right next to each other, gas and electric, so we can decide which one we we want to use. Perfect. If it's sunny outside, switch on the electric. And if not, then... Cook it with your poo gas. <laughs> exactly. Cool. <laughs> I still can't really wrap my head around that being a thing, eh? I mean, it's it's so cool to see it working, and it makes so much sense. Is there, like, a little bit of mental stigma that you have to get over in order to use the biogas? No, no, no. Because really, when you think about it, it is just absolutely just clean methane. And I guess if you can sort of separate yourself from the idea of how it's created. (laughs) We're so used to it by now, we don't even think about it too much. Yeah. Methane's methane, I guess. Methane is methane. I just think, I mean, it's so bloody clever, isn't it? (laughs) And it's so cool to see it working. But yeah, there's definitely like a little bit of mental uh, mental math that I have to to do to get my head around that. Very, very cool. (laughs) And the sleeping loft, everything up there still going well for you? Yeah, we haven't changed anything really. Like it's all the same way it was seven years ago. So it's still the same bed even. The only thing is since we got that puppy, we put the cat food up there. Right. (laughs) So she, you know, she still has her food station. Yeah, but that's the only change. Yeah. And where does puppy sleep? So puppy has her own bed and her her bed goes in front of our mattress, also in the sleeping loft. So she sleeps with us basically. Oh, very cute. (laughs) And so the place is just looking really good. And what I love more than what you've created here is just how well this has all worked out for you because living here has enabled you to do something very special. Can you tell me about that? Living here has allowed us to just completely bypass all that growing cost of living. And so we've been able to save really well. And now we're in a fortune position to have bought a property for the first time. So we're very happy. Congratulations. <laughs> That's huge. Yeah. Because that really is the dream, isn't it? To be able to take tiny house living and use it as that stepping stone into the property market. And you have now accomplished that, which is so exciting. How long have you had the property? Just like one week. It's very new for us. <laughs> yeah. 
New property, new puppy in one week. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> that was a busy week. <laughs> what a great time for us to arrive. I yeah. know, right? Good timing. <laughs> and tell me about the new property. Yeah, three bedroom home, 800 meters squared, um, in a suburb environment close to the beach, close to the park. We really enjoy where we are in the tiny house, so we actually just want to stay as we are. But we, what we're going to do is rent out that house, so then by the time, if and when we want to move into that New house, yeah, we can. And um, someone's been paying off the mortgage for us over that time. So I feel like the tiny house is the house that just keeps on giving, really. And is the new house site, is that big enough for you to eventually move your tiny house there if you want as well? Yeah, that's the great thing about the property. It's got a very long, large driveway, which can actually fit the tiny house in. So if we want to, we could move the house there and rent that out there as well so it just keeps on giving we're very happy <laughs> oh, that is so exciting and i just love that living this way has really paid off for you guys i'm just so proud of you and what you've accomplished <laughs> thank you yeah we're pinching ourselves it's been amazing so you've lived here now coming on seven years tell me about what just day-to-day -day life here in the tiny house has been like i think for me a lot of it is organization as well. So I think it's good to keep the house sort of tidy-ish because it's such a small space, stuff accumulates quickly. So I try to put stuff away quickly, but also it's a pretty relaxed lifestyle. During the week, we pretty much work during the day and then um, go for another walk with the puppy and have quiet evenings. So it's um, pretty un <laughs> unspectacular, I guess. And on the weekend, we, um, you know, we do our hobbies and every now and then we go on trips or weekend trips. Hmm. I love that. Especially the world out there gets pretty hectic, gets pretty fast paced. And I can't help but think of the number of people who are sitting for hours in traffic every day and going into an office and living under fluorescent lights. And yeah. here you both have really great jobs where you get to work and enjoy your environment from home. You get to be close to the beach. You get to be connected to your hobbies and all of these wonderful things. You get to completely immerse yourself in this beautiful environment and have really achieved this wonderful slower paced life that simultaneously has enabled you to get so far ahead of so many of the people that are in the grind, which I just think is so inspiring. Yeah, that's a really good way to sum it up. And it's become our normal. We don't really think much of it. It's just simple, easy, relaxing living. And yeah, we, we really enjoy it. And so if you reflect back on the last years of living in your beautiful tiny home now, what would you say this place means to you now? Sustainability, financially, uh, lifestyle, it's just ticked all those boxes for us and that's exactly what we wanted and it, and it worked. So we're very happy. Yeah. The tiny house unlocked a lot for us. A little bit more financial freedom. To me, this house has unlocked a lot. <laughs> and also health-wise because we are pretty calm and relaxed now compared to when we were living in, in Sydney, which is pretty stressful and hectic and loud. And yeah, so now we achieve the opposite, which I really like and I'm really happy for. Yeah. Yeah. One other thing which is really remarkable about your story is this is all DIY. You both have done everything here. That is, again, just such a tremendous journey that you've been on. Can you just reflect on that and having those skills and that learning curve and going through all of these motions to be where you are today? We've really enjoyed the process. Yeah, it's been very confidence building because um, when you learn, you enjoy and and, and and the tiny house gave us that as well. We, yeah, it's been really good. Yeah. And these are skills that you'll now be able to carry with you for life, including now being able to renovate your three bedroom home. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even That's thought right. about having the confidence to renovate our own home, but now no hesitation at all. I'm excited to get into it. <laughs> I love it. When I think about your journey and just how far you have both come, you know, your story is so remarkable. You set up the solar system here on the land. You built this tiny house in situ off of the solar power. The amount of DIY, the learning curve to all of this, everything that you have done is just such a tremendous accomplishment. And I've said it before, but I'll say it again, that I am just immensely proud of what you have both accomplished here. Thank you so much for sharing it with me once Thank again. Thank you. Thank you, Bryce. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. <laughs> When I revisit a tiny house, I'm not just revisiting a house, I'm visiting old friends. And 
When I started doing these tiny house tours, I realized that I found my tribe. People who I respect and admire, and Paul and Annette are such a great example of that. They are a power couple who have DIY'd an amazing home and set out to accomplish so many of their dreams. Now I'm sitting in their incredible home. After seven years, they've expanded their solar system, which now charges a beautiful new electric vehicle. They've purchased a property, and it is amazing for me to see just how this tiny home has opened up all of these wonderful opportunities for them. And I cannot wait to see what the future will now bring. Thank you, Kluke, for sponsoring this video and helping to make what we do possible. When you ask people what they like most about tiny house living, the most frequent answer is freedom to travel. And that's why I think you'll be really excited to learn about Kluke. Kluke is an amazing booking platform that helps you to find experiences when you're traveling. They have a vast array of activities, all at super affordable prices. It's super easy to use. Just search your destination and find out about all the fun stuff that you can do there. You can even check authentic reviews from other travelers to make sure it's something you'd enjoy. So if you love to travel and are ready to create some great new memories, Kluke may just be your new best travel buddy. Give it a go, just hit the link in the description of this video, download the app and get started on your next big adventure. Use our promo code LIVINGBIG to get 10% off your booking.